Hey everybody, Mark Rober here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into the world of futuristic farming with a head-to-head -head battle aeroponics versus hydroponics. Which one will reign supreme? Now, you might be wondering why even compare these two? Well, both of these methods are like the superheroes of sustainable agriculture. They use way less water than traditional farming, take up a fraction of the space, and your plants grow faster than a cheetah on a sugar rush. But just like any good superhero duo, they each have their own unique powers and weaknesses. In this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know. The science behind how each system works, the pros and cons, and even how much they cost. By the end, you'll be able to decide which method is the ultimate farming champion for you. Let's do this. Alright, first up, let's talk about hydroponics. Imagine this. You walk into a greenhouse, but instead of dirt, you see rows of plants chilling in water. That's hydroponics in a nutshell. It's like giving your plants a refreshing bath, but instead of rubber duckies, they get a nutrient-rich cocktail that makes them grow like crazy. So, how does this magical water bath work? Well, it all starts with these things called net pots. They're basically little baskets that hold your plants and allow their roots to dangle down into the water below. Now this isn't just any old water. We're talking about a carefully balanced solution packed with all the essential nutrients your plants need to thrive. Think of it like Gatorade, but for plants. One popular method is the nutrient film technique, or NFT for short. It's like a water slide for your plants, where a thin film of nutrient solution constantly flows over their roots. This is super efficient and works wonders for leafy greens like lettuce and spinach. Then we've got deep water culture, or DWC, which is perfect for beginners. Now if hydroponics is like giving your plants a relaxing bath, then aeroponics is like sending them to a spa. We're talking next level pampering here, folks. In an aeroponic system, the plant roots are suspended in mid-air, and they're misted with a nutrient-rich solution at regular intervals. It's like a fine mist you'd find in a fancy perfume shop, but instead of smelling like roses, it smells like plant food. This might sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's actually based on a simple principle. Plants need oxygen to thrive, and guess what? Air is full of oxygen. By exposing the roots directly to the air, aeroponics allows for maximum oxygen absorption, which translates to faster growth and bigger yields. Just like with hydroponics, there are different types of aeroponic systems out there. One popular method is low-pressure aeroponics, or LPA, which is a great option for beginners. Then we've got high-pressure aeroponics or HBA which is like the Ferrari of aeroponic systems. And for those of you who are short on space, there's aeroponic towers. Let's compare hydroponics and aeroponics. First, water usage. Aeroponics uses 95% less water than traditional farming. Next, oxygen. Aeroponics provides roots with constant air, boosting growth. Maintenance-wise, hydroponics is easier. Aeroponics needs regular nozzle cleaning, finally cost. Hydroponics is cheaper to set up than aeroponics. All right, let's break down the pros and cons of hydroponic farming. First up, the good stuff. One of the biggest advantages of hydroponics is that it's relatively easy to set up and maintain, especially compared to traditional farming or even aeroponics. You don't need a green thumb or a degree in botany to get started, it's like assembling IKEA furniture. If you can follow instructions, you can build a hydroponics system. Another big plus is that hydroponics is more affordable for beginners. You can dip your toes into the world of soilless gardening without breaking the bank. Hydroponics is also incredibly versatile and works well for a wide variety of plants. Whether you're dreaming of fresh herbs, leafy greens, or even juicy tomatoes, there's a hydroponic system out there that can make it happen. But of course, no system is perfect. One of the main drawbacks of hydroponics is that it uses more water than aeroponics. Another potential downside is that some hydroponic systems require constant monitoring, especially when it comes to pH and nutrient levels. It's like having a pet. You need to be responsible and attentive to its needs. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of aeroponic farming. First up, the good stuff. One of the biggest advantages of aeroponics is that it uses the least amount of water out of all the farming methods we've discussed. Another major advantage is that aeroponics leads to faster growth and higher yields compared to other methods. This is because the roots have constant access to oxygen, which is like giving your plants a shot of adrenaline. And if you're short on space, aeroponics is your new best friend. It's ideal for space-saving vertical farming, which means you can grow a ton of food in a small area. But of course, aeroponics isn't without its drawbacks. One of the main downsides is that it can be more expensive to set up than hydroponics, especially if you're going for a high-pressure system. Another potential downside is that aeroponics requires more maintenance than hydroponics. You need to regularly clean the misting nozzles to prevent clogging. Alright, let's talk about money. 
We all know that cost is a major factor when deciding on any new hobby or venture, and farming is no exception. So which method is easier on the wallet hydroponics or aeroponics? Let's start with small-scale setups. If you're just starting out and want to dip your toes into the world of hydroponics, you can get a basic DIY Kratky system up and running for as little as $10 to $50. For a slightly more advanced setup like an NFT or DWC system, you're looking at spending around $100 to $500. Now let's move on to aeroponics. A basic DIY small tank aeroponic system will set you back around $200 to $500. If you want to step up your game with a medium-sized system like an aeroponic tower, you're looking at spending $500 to $2,000. And if you're ready to go all-in with a large-scale commercial aeroponic farm, be prepared to invest a hefty sum. Now, let's talk about the bottom line. Profitability. After all, farming is a business and the goal is to make a profit. So, which method is more likely to line your pockets with green hydroponics or aeroponics? Hydroponics can be a very profitable venture if you play your cards right. It's all about choosing the right crops and finding the right market. Fast-growing, high-demand crops like lettuce, basil, and spinach are excellent choices for hydroponic systems. These leafy greens are always in demand, and you can grow multiple cycles in a shorter period compared to traditional farming. Aeroponics on the other hand, excels at growing premium organic crops with high yields. Think of those perfectly formed blemish-free strawberries or juicy tomatoes that command top dollar at farmers markets. If you're looking to maximize your profits and cater to a discerning market that demands the best of the best, aeroponics might be the way to go. Even the most well-maintained hydroponic or aeroponic system can run into problems from time to time. But don't worry, we're here to help you troubleshoot those issues like a pro. Let's start with hydroponics. One common problem is algae growth. Those pesky green invaders just love warm, nutrient-rich water. The good news is that preventing algae growth is relatively simple. Just use lightproof containers to block out sunlight, which algae need to thrive. Another common issue is nutrient imbalances. Remember that carefully balanced nutrient solution we talked about earlier? Well, over time, the pH and EC, electrical conductivity levels can fluctuate, leading to nutrient deficiencies or toxicities. The key here is to regularly test and adjust the pH and EC levels of your nutrient solution. Now let's move on to aeroponics. One of the most common problems with this method is clogged nozzles. Those tiny misting nozzles are essential for delivering nutrients to your plant's roots, so when they get clogged, it's a big deal. The good news is that cleaning them is a breeze. Simply soak the nozzles in vinegar or hydrogen peroxide to dissolve any mineral buildup. Another potential issue with aeroponics is root drying. The solution here is to increase the misting frequency or adjust the misting duration to ensure the roots are always nice and moist. All right, we've covered a lot of ground today. We've explored the ins and outs of hydroponics and aeroponics, compared their pros and cons, and even talked about profitability. Now, the million dollar question, which method is right for you? If you're looking for a simpler, more affordable system that's relatively easy to maintain, hydroponics is an excellent choice. It's a great option for beginners, hobbyists, and anyone who wants to grow fresh produce at home without a lot of fuss. Choose hydroponics if you want a system that's easy to set up and maintain, you have limited time for maintenance, you're on a budget and looking for an affordable option, you're interested in growing leafy greens, herbs, or small fruits. On the other hand, if you're looking for a more efficient system that can produce higher yields in a shorter amount of time, aeroponics is the way to go. Choose aeroponics if you want faster growth and higher efficiency, you're interested in urban or commercial farming. Well, folks, there you have it. We've reached the end of our epic battle between hydroponics and aeroponics. Both methods are incredible examples of how innovation is transforming the way we grow food. Hydroponics is like the reliable workhorse of soilless gardening. Affordable, easy to manage, and perfect for beginners. Aeroponics, on the other hand, is like the high-performance sports car, more expensive and demanding but capable of achieving incredible results. So, which method will you choose? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear about your hydroponic or aeroponic adventures. And while you're at it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. Well that was awesome. I hope you guys learned a ton about hydroponics and aeroponics. It's incredible to see how technology is changing the game when it comes to growing food. Who knows what the future holds? Maybe we'll all be growing our own food in space one day. But for now, I want to hear from you. Which method are you more interested in trying, hydroponics or aeroponics? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're feeling extra adventurous, maybe even try building your own system. There are tons of great resources available online. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.